Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Do you hear me? Do you hear me well? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, hello, everybody, and welcome to this session. And I think uh, just for better quality, I might probably um, turn off my video uh, and just again, hello, hello, and um, would like to loud and clear. So wonderful. So um, it's great to be here and participate in this wonderful event. Uh, yeah, I see there is some. Um, yeah, there is some warning about um, slow connection. So maybe I really would turn off my webcam, but. All right. Um, so um, when another uh, MOOC was announced and N Nelly offered and invited us to contribute to the MOOC, um, so I was thinking what I would like to discuss and what would I like to share about, um, to share my experience of teaching online uh, on Moodle, using Moodle. And um, I got the inspiration to give this talk from my students' blogs. I was finishing the courses, um, and I taught four courses this spring. And almost in every blog, I heard students sharing their discoveries in the end of the course. And they were uh, also uh, confessing how he, they, before this course, before my courses, they hated cooperative learning um, work, group work, because in the past they were um, completing all work and uh, how they were not pleased and they were not reliable. Uh, their partners in the groups were not reliable, and they um, they just to make the work done. They were completing the work, and everybody was getting the same grade. So, and they also some in one of the blogs. I read uh, from one of the students that uh, I just will read from uh, from the blog. I have heard uh, a lot of. Uh, controversial things about cooperative learning. Um, research um, other um, conflicting about the efficacy of teaching methodology. Dr. Miller, one of my professors, is very critical of the teaching style. Nevertheless, um, and a uh, professor who specializes in educating students with disabilities and professor who specializes in educating educators who teach students with disabilities. Uh, she has strong sentiment about on the research and poorly supported um, teaching methodology. And I must also confess, so throughout my um, 13 years at my division, I was really having battles uh, with some of the professors who are mainly special uh, education trained who were against cooperative learning. And they keep telling that there is no uh, research supporting, supporting uh, education, uh, cooperative learning. Um, so it, it was really uh, upsetting because 
um, collaboration, the, the uh, cooperative learning and collaborative learning really has a lot of benefits um, in um, in teaching, and um, it it really brings a lot of um, value to learning and to also in, in enjoyment and teaching. Online collaborative learning is an idea whose time has come, especially now with lots of uh, technologies and uh, communicative and social networking um, techniques that you can use using uh, online tools. Um, the desire by students to take courses and programs via internet and uh, using different media uh, is forever al altering the formal education. And many institutions and teachers have been caught uh, unprepared for this phenomenon. Research into teaching and learning techniques um, that are effective in, in the online environment is therefore both very urgent and meaningful and important. Um, the educational changes uh, research um, researches researched by new um, computing and communicating technologies are profound. And this new environment is one of which students are more likely to come from diverse range of backgrounds, have different uh, technological and, and learning skills, academic skills, backgrounds. Um, they have a desire to study at times and in places of their own choosing. And unfortunately, current classrooms really, if you walk through classrooms, you will see that teachers are still in front of the classroom. Uh, and um, Nelly, I think somebody's microphone is on. Um, and um, they still have lectures and um, testing, a lot of testing. And these, um, this environment is really long overdue. And what's a, a such paradigm that can change uh, the, the palette of education, the look of education, and have a lot, has a lot of significant promise is that as of um, co collaborative learning. And, um, I would like to say a, a, a few say a few words about uh, collaborative learning and cooperative learning. That is not a new idea. Uh, people have been learning informally in groups for thousands of years. It is interesting to really um, to observe that um, traditional classroom is still dominant in uh, today's um, uh, institutions. Um, and despite, uh, despite of this, uh, despite this, uh, students prefer and make up their own uh, study groups to study together. And, and they, uh, they really uh, collaborate uh, when preparing for classes. Um, the educator, Galet, um, has put, uh, pointed out that uh, collaborative learning methods were experiment, uh, experimented and uh, found to be successful um, as early in, in the late, uh, late 1800s. And when George Jardine employed them, um, this, is, this is his picture, um, he employed uh, collaborative learning in his philosophy classes at, at the University of Glasgow. And he came to believe that the teacher should move to the perimeter of the action and allow students freedom to learn from one another. Uh, I'm proud to say that my compatriot Lev Vygotsky 
is known uh, as a research and educator who promoted um, uh, um, co cooperative learning. And he uh, was foremost um, amongst the pioneers who explored the cause the relationship between social interact uh, interaction and individual learning. Um, another famous educator, psychologist, Jean Piaget, was also um, a supporter of collaborative learning and constructive cognitive development. Often, um, and he, he mentioned that um, in social interaction and cognitive development uh, go hand in hand. Um, and um, he conducted research more than six decades based on a framework that, uh, that is called ge generic epistemology. epistemology. And um, mostly can be translated as a developmental theory of knowledge. For American education, uh, for American psychologists, and uh, happened to be my friend, um, Jerome Bruner, um, was really an active uh, in uh, promoting and proving, um, proving that um, social process in which students construct new ideas and concepts based on current knowledge. Jerome Bruner, he will be, no, he will be in 19, uh, in 2015, he, he will be a hundred years, hundred years old. Uh, and he still is active. He still, he still teaches at the University of New York, uh, State University of uh, New York at law school. Uh, no, he is actually, he is a, Polish Jew, but he was his parents were Polish Jew, but Jews. But he uh, he was born here in the United States, and um, he's a he's a um, honor, honored honorable citizen of um, Italy, and his idea of discovery learning is supported and promoted and implemented in many schools of Italy. So I, he's still active, very uh, intellectually and cognitively, uh, absolutely um, a wonderful person and a researcher and and a friend. We keep in touch with him, and um, I'm very happy and proud uh, to have to have known him. So anyway, so. As you see, that idea of cooperative learning is not new, and it is well researched. Uh, of course, um, and uh, recently there was a work. Um, uh, there, there were several books written about cooperative learning, and and. Um, there are the, there is a proof and evidence of benefits of co collaborative learning. Um, so, and for example, the work of Panitz in 1997, but he he has his own website and he still continues uh, working uh, and supporting. Uh, this is him and with his children. Um, he. He listed 67 distinct, uh, distinct benefits of co uh, collaborative learning supported by academic, social, and psychological. Um, and uh, among them are building self-esteem, reducing anxiety, um, uh, encouraging, encouraging understanding of diversity, fostering um, fostering relationships and stimulating critical thinking. Um, so there are four, uh, four characteristics, uh, for example, in the research of 
Dinsman and uh, his team, uh, there are four characteristics of collaborative learning. Um, shared, lo uh, shared knowledge between teachers and students uh, is in many ways a characteristics of uh, traditional knowledge also, classroom, where the teacher is the information giver, but it also incorporates some student input where students share exchange uh, knowledge. And uh, it's more powerful when students teach each other and share knowledge. Shared authority is the second characteristic of characteristic of cooperative co collaborative learning. Teachers and students um, share um, the setting goals with a topic with students, um, thereby allowing students to uh, approach the completion of an assignment in a manner of uh, their choosing. Um, the third characteristics, characteristics is a teacher as a mediator. In this area, the teachers encourage the students to learn how to learn. And this being uh, one of the most important aspects of collaborative learning. When, when uh, the teacher is uh, a guide on the side and uh, encourages students to become uh, constructors of meaning, uh, learning on their own, and teaching each other, it's, it's, it's really um, makes students uh, learning how to learn, how to access information, how to organize it, how to process it, and how to reflect on it. And the last, but not the least, uh, characteristic of uh, co collaborative learning is heterogeneous grouping. Um, all students uh, to respect and appreciate the contributions made by all members of the class, no, more, no matter what the content, what the um, subject they are learning. And these four characteristics appear to apply equally um, as well as in a traditional classroom setting, the teacher giving information to students who will uh, then go away and um, gather this information and uh, understand it and applies, the, um, applies it in uh, sharing with others. And, <clears throat> and uh, so, the um, the researcher Brafi uh, calls traditional classroom as a fundamental concept of teaching. Um, in in many many college classrooms and and in many schools, teachers are still standing in front of the classroom, and um, and students at desks or tables uh, facing them. Uh, this is not appropriate for uh, collaborative learning. And um, the research showed that, uh, that a simple rearrangement of furniture uh, into group settings uh, really um, allows students to take uh, roles that are more prominent in the classroom, and they become uh, uh, collaborative and equal participants, um, participants in the learning process. Um, so still, uh, there is a shift uh, nowadays um, from um, sage on the stage um, classroom to a guide on the side, um, and especially in it is, uh, I think, uh, effectively and um, nicely working in, especially in an online environment. Um, and collaborative learning can succeed when students share doubts, comments, and questions with each other who share the same common educational goals. And uh, some researchers like Deliver and Schneider a state that when two people collaborate, they often have to justify their actions to each other 
and this will lead to a great understanding of the information being taught or being shared. Um, and um, in my collaboration with uh, global educators, and especially with, uh, and mainly with Nelly, uh, really uh, proved that. So we we share ideas, we uh, justify our actions, and uh, it really brings us to better understanding of each other and uh, more productive uh, work. Um, so I I I have a question um, to the to today's class today's session. Um, do you what do you think uh, and how co cooperative learning is different from collaborative learning so what is colla collaboration and what is cooperation how um, so how how you um, what what do you understand do we do we need to distinguish one from another do we uh, or it's a matter of just a uh, research debate. Uh, what do you think? So what is the so what is the distinction? What is the what is cooperative learning and what is collaborative learning? Okay, um, collaboration, the objective is important, cooperative, the interaction is important. Uh, this is one distinction, how to control in a straight rows because my university still, yes, that, you, uh, thank you, employer, <laughs> you proved, uh, you proved the, uh, the setting that is uh, re traditional and regular. Uh, collaboration is physically close and cooperation can be from a dis distance. Uh, what about the process? Um, all right, so, so um, I see um, cooperative two people work together, collaborative more a bigger group at different places. Okay, um, well, you can cooperate also with many people. Um, and Jigsaw is one of the examples of cooperative learning. Collaborating is doing something together. Uh, now, it's, it's good. Do you need cooperative in collabor collaborative? Well, co cooperative can be, can be part of or belongs to co collaboration, but collaboration cannot be in cooperative learning. Cooperating is each doing his own. That's very good, Knives. Uh, cooperating is each doing its own and then bringing it together. Very good, yes. Uh, so in cooperation, people have pieces of a puzzle and then they combine and there is a kind of subordination. subordination. Uh, And right, so yes, so these are all good points. Yes, uh, unfortunately, sometimes in in research papers, uh, these uh, these terms are interchangeable, but they really have different features, and that's what I wanted to. I share with you my observations and my research. Um, okay, so um, cooperative learning is more controlled. Cooperative learning is more about teacher decides who is in the group uh, and uh, who gets what piece of a puzzle and how they work. It's still 
more under control. And I would say that cooperative learning, um, collaborative learning is a more mature form of cooperative learning. It's a highest, highest level of cooperation because in collaboration, people are equal. Everybody, for, for cooperative learning, people are having a goal. In both of them, they have a goal. They have a learning goal, shared goal. But in co cooperation, people are doing piece of a puzzle and then contribute to the whole. As far as in learning, in collaborative learning, people do the same work and they interact and they are responsible for the whole together uh, uh, in contrast to uh, cooperative learning where people are responsible only for one piece. And I think uh, if, if, if elementary school teachers teach students to co cooperate, by the time they reach and they understand what, what it means to be accountable, what it means to be reliable, what it means to um, be reflective, uh, what it means to be accountable in your work, uh, by the time they come to high school, middle school and high school, they will learn to collaborate, uh, effectively collaborate. So they both have shared learning goal. They both have uh, co group composition, uh, group roles, group process, uh, task structure, uh, knowledge input, task output, and assessment. But the level of freedom the, the level of interaction the level uh, the level uh, they are different uh, and as um, you see in this picture uh, teachers cooperative learning is more uh, teacher controlled whereas in collaborative learning people are responsible and interact and uh, they are learners as group they decide together uh, and they choose the ways how to attack the task, tackle the task, and complete it. Um, and um, so I think it's a very interesting um, distinction and important one. And um, so um, the crucial uh, factors in, for collaboration uh, are um, uh, pointed out by uh, several uh, several researchers, but um, Alden is uh, one of them. Uh, this group creation and definition is very important. Uh, how you compose groups, how you make make up groups uh, in order to effectively collaborate. And establishment of communication sessions, whether they are synchronous or asynchronous. <coughs> <coughs> oh, sorry. <coughs> and the task of assigning students to groups in online classes is often a, of a paramount importance. <coughs> groups composed of people of uniform interest make this task much easier and more effective. <clears throat> so, and uh, usually um, in my classes, uh, especially in online classes, uh, I establish the pattern. For example, in during the uh, long semester, um, fifteen week semester, I uh, I would um, arrange uh, the, the following pattern. We we meet as a class, whole class. Uh, one week and the next week that will be a week for individual and collaborative work and students know from the very beginning uh, that they will be collaborating um, Mike um, uh, so um, my my husband is living with the dog to the vet so uh, I was just distracted sorry and that's what happens. So this is life when teaching from home. Um, so, and uh, students know from the very beginning that <coughs> that they will be collaborating, and 
they know from the beginning uh, that they would uh, be uh, responsible for collaboration for group work for group projects and uh, they know they will be um, evaluating each other's contributions if you if they know from the very beginning if the if uh, a teacher professor establishes this um, this <laughs> this uh, rules from the beginning that it really brings this is a factor that contributes to effective collaborative uh, work um, and of course the professor is a, a, a really important factor in the uh, in establishing a productive effective uh, collaborative work of students a thoughtful instructor capable of balancing guidance with freedom is one crucial factor in the successful operation of an online collaborative course and um, you all participating in <clears throat> MOOC in Moodle MOOC and you see how Nellie Tom Thomas are um, uh, guides on this on the side they are uh, encouraging in, in, and inspiring you to to do your work on your own and explore things on your own, construct your own meaning, and learn how to make um, uh, your products that you are creating uh, on uh, on your own. And that's how you learn, and that's how you um, you um, make and and the collaborators make the work uh, effective. So these are. Uh, these are features of collaborative classrooms. Uh, when students um, collaborate, they learn, they share, uh, communicate, and they publish their work in order to, again, reflect on each other's work. So, and there are, of course, in order to, to make this process effective, effective there are tools co for collaboration. Um, there are tools for uploading uh, content, create and share uh, projects, collaborative projects, and there are tools for safe and secure communication, which is Moodle. Um, so, um, so how and uh, how you do this? So I. Uh, I would like to share some of my experience, and I will um, share this with you. So, of course, I teach all my courses with Moodle, and uh, these are the tools that uh, I use. Uh, chat, forum, blogs, uh, podcasts, students create podcasts and then share uh, quizzes. I um, mainly use uh, quizzes for uh, self-learning students I don't do I don't um, assign uh, during classes any quizzes I assign students to complete quizzes on their own and share the results with each other and comment uh, on the results and then share with me uh, and I sometimes, especially for example, this in the summer, I'm, I'm teaching the course right now, Psychology of Learning and um, Theories of Learning. And students complete, I set up um, um, tests for self-learning and they allowed to, uh, to complete them, their uh, unlimited attempts. So I give students a chance to learn the content, and they can do as many uh, times the test uh, until they reach a higher result. So because they are learning for themselves, they are not learning for me, and um, they are sharing the results. They discuss with each other where what the um, mistakes would may be and where they had misunderstanding, misconception. And they uh, then uh, in, uh, collaborate with each other. They use uh, questions. We have a special um, hello. 
Hello, do you hear me? Um, somebody complained that, yes? Okay, good. Um, and uh, what is also wonderful, students are giving feedback. Um, it, uh, and I use three pluses and a wish. Students know that um, when they complete their group project, they post their projects on discussion forum. And they, after they posted their projects, they, are, uh, they know that they have to provide a three pluses and a wish um, uh, reflection, feedback. And it, it becomes a, like a second nature after each forum. Um, and if it's in face-to-face in -face class, students still know when somebody presents in front of the classroom a group presents in the front of the classroom, everybody opens the forum to share their, their um, feedback, what was three, three things that they liked about the presentation um, and the content of the presentation, and one thing they think they would do differently. And they, it, it becomes really, uh, and especially now with a new a testing system and new certification system in the United States. Students have to submit their work EDTPA in one of the assignments is, is um, how to give um, a feedback to students' work. So this, this format, three pluses and a wish, really um, works well in so, in, in so many levels and teaches them to give constructive feedback, constructive um, um, reflection. And um, it's really um, uh, wonderful. So um, this, this is a, a very interesting uh, pa uh, pattern or format model, constructivist learning environment designed by Jonathan. Um, uh, this model uh, is based on an uh, authentic um, activity, which may be a project, a problem, or a case study that learners must solve or resolve together. So um, the students are all given a project or space and a problem to solve, and then they uh, use uh, contextual tools uh, and um, environments, and um, they explore related cases, and they uh, use information resources, and and then uh, cognitive tools, either web or they use um, uh, graphic organizers. Uh, to uh, arrange their organization, their um, content, and they use collaborative tools. For example, um, uh, in my classes, I use uh, Google Docs presentations where students collaborate and contribute, and you can check who contributed what, what, and uh, they uh, and they. Uh, and then they uh, use contextual, uh, contextual uh, tools, social contextual tools. They sh post it on um, Prezi, or they post on different networks to share the results. And it, it happened to be very effective. So, um, if, so how you create collaborative learning uh, community? Um, so. Uh, I, I use the following ways. Uh, students in the beginning to create this uh, safe learning environment, I use name projects. Students create name projects to introduce themselves creatively. Digital introductions uh, where students, I assign, uh, depending on how many students in class, I assign everybody a different digital tool. Glockster, um, uh, Telegami, um, um, uh, Google Docs presentation, Poll Everywhere, or Socrative, or this, 
my favorite, the latest favorite students tool is Kahoot. It's a game type of quiz that when students create quiz and there is a competitive environment. So, or uh, on the forum I create three pluses and a, three, three truths and a lie and students uh, start collaborating, interacting with each other and that's how they learn about each other and and uh, create bonds. Creating class rules, it's another a very effective um, tool that can contribute to creating positive and collaborative learning environment. Students create their own rules. What, what do you want, uh, what classroom you would like to be in to collaborate and interact and they create their own rules and they, I post them in the, you know, on the discussion forum. Uh, another activity is really good to create groups in order to create supportive environment is who is expert in. I create a choice activity where I ask students who knows how to blog, who has his own or her own blog, a wiki, or who used Webspiration, or a thing, a thing link or something. And students post and that helps me create groups and then when I uh, do group choice activity or, or I create groups uh, with experts uh, uh, with expert in each group and then what happens those experts in wikis or in blogs or they teach uh, their partners and that's that creates their dependence interdependence and um, and really helpful ideas um, that really uh, creates a, they create bond with each other and they support each other when and then when they create when they are responsible for uh, group projects they know that there is an expert and they feel safe about contributing collaborating collaborating on those um, so. Uh, what are the uh, major projects, cost projects that collaborative? And um, I I do this in the beginning of the class. I tell that I inform my students that that my courses are based on collaborative because they will work in collaborative environments throughout all their lives, and they have to learn how to collaborate, and they have to learn in, at the to the, to the level that they can teach their future uh, students in their own classrooms how to collaborate. So students complete uh, projects, current events, Native Americans, a jigsaw project. Um, students design collaboratively unit plans and then they teach lessons in the field together collaboratively and um, artifact bags project where students create uh, individual artifact bags uh, um, and then they come and they collaborate and teach each other using those um, um, using those uh, bags. In teaching with technology or literacy in technology class um, my uh, as I said my students uh, meet every other week and students know that during that week they will have a group project. So for example there is a, a project in the beginning of the semester each group creates their own name they are responsible to design a name and design a motto or credo and it really brings them together because the name should reflect the chemistry of the group the the the, the personality of the group and they uh, come up with a name, they come up with a motto, and they live with this name uh, throughout the whole semester. It really brings them together. I also have constructivist uh, web quest where the students complete the, uh, the web quest and as a result of the web quest they create a lesson together uh, using five E's, an inquiry lesson. Um, digital learner project is about net generation. They create a portrait of digital learners. 
They also create uh, using Glocks, so they create interactive poster, and they um, they work together. And then in the end of the week, uh, they submit um, um, they submit group project individual feedback, and that's what it looks like. So for all projects, they know, and in the end of the course, they also submit a summary of all projects. And this group, uh, this uh, form has, what did I do to help my group succeed? And they evaluate themselves. And then they say what exactly they did for the, uh, for the project. And they also say uh, what they will do differently next time to make their project uh, more effective, group project more effective. And then they evaluate each other they are partners, and they also give brief comments uh, why they evaluated the way evaluated, what, um, how they evaluated, and uh, what the contribution of their partners were. And they give comments and suggestions how to improve collaborative work. I do this on purpose because uh, they, they learn it uh, firsthand how to this is one of the characteristics that really uh, makes group work different from cooperative lo cooperative learning group work, because if 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 teachers does do, does not do teacher do not do does not do group processing, then it is just traditional group work, and nobody is responsible for anything, and the teacher shows that she doesn't care. Uh, how people were, uh, how students were collaborating, cooperating, uh, and usually that what happens if there is not not that feedback, there is no group processing. There is some, that's what happens. Usually people are um, somebody one one person completes the work, and that's how the project is done. It's just the group work. It's not cooperative learning. Uh, so these are examples of um, name projects, group name projects, and a, in a live presentation on on, um, on with IQ, you can click on these links. These are presentations about group projects and how everybody contributed to the slides. It's a slideshow uh, how um, every collaborator contributed to this. Um, group project um, business card, so to say. Um, and this is a project um, that was a project of um, net generation. One group chose to use uh, Wordle, as you see, and another group chose Glockster. They were, again, they were doing collaboratively. Um, so next project is uh, each group was responsible to discuss and um, report and share with other groups about social networking tools. And one group was responsible for Delicious, uh, Back the Web, Edmodo, Pinterest. Um, other group was responsible for Twitter, uh, Canvas, Podcast, Storyboard. And so this group, it's also a live link, chose to use uh, Present Me. And they were discussing um, other social uh, networking tools. And reflections. These are also live, tool, live um, links to blogs where students were sharing. Um, and so this is obvious where the, stu the teacher, the uh, students are sharing. Um, prior to this semester, uh, I absolutely despised group work. Being very concerned about my grades, I was always the person putting in the effort. But this is the proof of what I was saying. The students really hate group work because they were not, they, their teachers were not using cooperative learning or collaborative learning approach, but they were using just traditional group work where just for a change, the teacher gives assignments to groups and, and does not complete it in the way it should be completed with reflections, feedback, 
uh, assigning roles and um, providing in the end uh, reflection part. Um, so, and they value, they show the value, uh, the, the sense of community they know. And so other students wrote that we all grew together like a family. And that's what students usually say, say about my classes, that when they finish the class, they feel like they're a family. And the sense of community, the sense of um, uh, really belonging uh, to a community uh, is really strong in the classes where you do correct, um, um, correctly the, um, the collaborative work. And, uh, and uh, these are, I usually do also in the beginning of the, on the, in the end of the class, students I used to do uh, in my former classes where um, most, most of the time students were face-to-face, -face, students were writing letters to the, my future classes. Now they're using tools. For example, one of the students, this is a, a presentation, this is a student who, wrote, who created a Voki and she shared with the, uh, future students of mine what it's, it's like to be in, Smir in Dr. Smirnova's classroom. And they, uh, they all say that you will leave the class with the sense of community, you become family. And uh, it's, yes, it's true. There is a lot of work. There is a lot of, um, and uh, so this, uh, this, is, uh, this is one of the students. So she created a video blog using, um, using uh, YouTube and if you click on this link and you move the uh, marker to uh, 5.5 uh, minutes mark, you will hear when the student is speaking about the benefits and the value of co collaboration with her partners in the work. So, um, and um, so this, I, uh, this was a voice thread where students were sharing um, the, their experience in the class. And so um, to sum up, collaborative learning has a lot of benefits if it is set up and facilitated correctly. And building communities of learners from the very beginning is important and contributive to effective group collaboration. Um, so, so this is my presentation and I was happy to share